to Feed the City, episode two. So last episode, pretty good one. We got this whole house built. It took us a long time, but I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. And uh, we got the kitchen done as well. We got some a fridge, a sink, an oven, everything somebody needs to make their house a home. Also, I said I was gonna do the, uh, the smeltery. And if you look behind me, that's exactly what you'll see. There's a tool station, part builder, pattern chest, stencil table. Everything's pretty much up and running. So let's jump in and I'll show you the rest of the completed Tinker's Construct smeltery. Now, like I said, this is a pretty simple build and you've all seen a Tinker's Construct smeltery being made before, I think. If you haven't seen one of these being made, this is what it is. So it's a bunch of seared bricks around. You need a tank or a gauge. You need a controller. You need smeltery drains that pour out into these basins. It's all, it's all beautiful stuff. It's all great stuff. And we've got a casting table, a casting basin to filter out the metal. So the metals go in here, the ore goes in here, turns into liquid here if you have the lava here. And then while it's in a liquid form, you use these faucets, they're taps, to pour them into blocks, or you pour them into casting tables, which are frames for making tools. Pretty simple. Okay, it looks like the, uh, the time is growing late because I've also got some kitchen stuff to put down. But what else have we got? So we've got a tool rack, a fruit basket, a spice rack, and a rack. That's from Mine Colonies, though. To put in the kitchen, a great place to store stuff. I'm gonna have a sleep before creepers start spawning. Ah, another beautiful day on the farm. Oh, and what a view every day. I never get tired of that view. I might, I might get tired at one point, though. Or if I deforest too much, it might become a bit of a bad view. So I've got to be careful of that. So yeah, what have I got? Well, I put down some extra kitchen counters, gathered up some terracotta. It's super easy to make, uh, and it looks great. All of these function as chests, so you can right-click on them and see what's inside. I've got a fruit basket here that I've put down, and how does that work? It's also an inventory. But what happens if I put an apple in here? Can I see it in the fruit basket? Oh, you can! Sweet! So I can array a bunch of fruits here and have them be on show. We've got a spice rack, which we can put down. It's probably a bit low for that, so we'll uh, just dig that up. We can put these a bit higher. So we can put a couple of spice racks up there. We've also got a tool rack. Two of these, which we can put up there. And we can put things like, um, I guess, the cooking for blockhead tools, like a chopping board and things, on the tool rack. Sounds pretty good. I've also got normal racks. And I can put these over here. And we can use these to just store extra ingredients that we need. Actually, I think you can probably stack these higher uh, and get even more storage space in here. Already our kitchen is looking pretty swish. There's even a fish in the sink. What the hell is that doing there? Can I get it out? Psh, I don't know. So this episode, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to build some power generation. I want to start with something that's very environmentally friendly. And I think the best mod for environmentally friendly power at the moment from experience feels like it's going to be immersive engineering. We've got this massive, kind of beautiful waterfall up here. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be pretty sweet if we could generate some uh, some water power from this big bad boy? I do think so. And also we could utilize the, the height of the mountain to maybe generate some, uh, some wind power too. And immersive engineering has all the things you need. If we take a look here, it's got windmills and water wheels. The perfect combination. So let's get to it. What am I going to need for a water wheel? Steel. Okay. Mm. I can't make steel yet. And if I want to make steel, oh, I'm going to have to wait until the city can provide me with steel bars. Oh, that's a nightmare. Oh, okay, okay. Let's think about this. I don't need power yet, but what I will need is uh, two of each animal to start breeding them. So I think I'm going to make some fences and set up some makeshift pens. And we'll see if we can go full Noah this episode and collect two of every animal that we need. For now, we need to set up some simple pens for the animals. And we'll put them here for the time being. Yeah, let's do that. So we want... I'll do it three by three. One, two, three. Space for a gate. And then the next one. All right, let's take a mental note. So cows are big. Sheep 
are big. Pigs, semi-big, they only give us meat. And of course, finally, we need ducks or chickens, whichever one you want to call them. So let's, uh, let's put some dirt on the corner there. Get that up and running. One, two, three, four. Oh, perfect. Holy crap. The exact right amount of fences that I need. So cows, sheep, pigs, ducks. Simple. And this is going to be a temporary holding place before we get the, uh, the actual animal pens in place. With the actual animal pens, we'll be able to uh, use machinery to breed them and then harvest them. There's a number of different ways we can do that, and we'll look into those once we've got the animals. So we want to make big chests, and we've got some really cool chests on the All The Mods series that we use wooden casing for. So we need planks, logs in the middle, and sticks on the top, bottom, left, and right. Super easy. Turn those all into planks. Turn all these into sticks. And uh, let's start making these, these wooden casings. I hope forward works. It might not work. Oh, yes, it does. Thank God. And what's this? We've got a book as well. Is it, is it a good book? Laser transport. Advanced item laser relays. What? I can send items with lasers? Shock absorber. Protect an area up to five blocks around it from any type of explosion. Oh, man. So if we had these around with power, we could uh, make our base creeper proof. A farmer. It's a block that can, once placed in the world, plant and harvest different types of crops. Oh, maybe this is what we want to use. For the basic crops, that might be a good idea. Okay, so eight small storage crates. And I reckon we're going to put use this area downstairs mostly for storage. Let's chuck these babies down. Oh, perfect amount. So, we need, to make, uh, we need to make some crops. Let's see if we can make a hoe. Might need two. Because these things are pretty flimsy. Bam! And suddenly the outdoors is blemish free. So let's uh, let's dig out some areas that we're going to put some simple crops on. There we go, a nice little trough. And again, this is just a temporary plot. It doesn't look very good because it's not very good. It's a kind of it's a kind of junk uh, junk little 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 kind of farming crop place, but. Should be okay. It even looks horrible. Look at that water flow. Blah. So it looks like fir wood is going to be uh, probably my go-to because it's so easy to make. Oh, he's free. He got free. Oh, that looks really ugly. I should have made it out of spruce. Ugh. Well, again, these are temporary pens, so we'll have to make do. Ugh. Okay, so we need some regular seeds for the chickens. We'll need some wheat for the cows and the sheep. And some carrots for the pig. Let's do it. So if you guys can think of anything else to jazz up our house, any must-have things we should put in the house, drop it in the comments section uh, and I'll see it and perhaps put it into action. Because there's all kinds of bits of furniture that make life a lot easier as well. Okay, a quick seed check. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got, we got the real deal. Actual seeds. We do still need carrots. So I'll have to go and pillage those from a village. Those are one thing that it's really useful to find a village for. If you can get a carrot from a village, that's pretty much what they're there for. Oh, beautiful. Thank you very much, guys. Let's head home. Another beautiful day on the farm. Have an apple. Every day starts with an apple. An apple a day keeps the doctor at bay. Maybe. I don't think it does, actually. I think if you ate nothing but apples, actually, you get very sick. That's an Enderman, but it's daytime, and he's looking at me. It's going to ignore him, pretend I don't see him. So the seeds are growing, slowly. We're also going to need an infinite water source, actually, so... Let's go and get the water for that. That'll come in very handy. And we'll put it up here. Eventually, we'll turn it into a well. Just like we did in Feed the World, actually. That reminds me. That was a pretty cool, pretty cool plan. There we go, infinite water source. Now we can start making our farms look a lot nicer. Blam! Perfect. So let's open the gates and get ready to welcome our new friends. So here you are, my friend. That's right, you like this stuff. So we're going to put you in the furthest pen over here. The first pen. Two brown cows. Ah! Oh! oh my god, that son of a gun. 
Well, boom, that's it. We've got two cows. We've got a whole bunch of crops on the grow. And the house is looking better than ever. I think it's time to start thinking about a more permanent place to start putting our animals. So what I want to do is build a big stable. It's going to have to have uh, food on the floor for the animals. But when I think about it, we're going to want something that we can heavily machine. So we'll need a big old fashioned style barn. I've got enough fir wood and I can scratch together enough cobblestone for sure. So uh, let's build ourselves a barn. Right, so it's time to build the animal barn. If you're a fan of the old school series, you might recognize the design for this build. It looks a lot like the barn from Stint's Farm. That's right, with Lewis. I want to do a big barn with a kind of shallow incline roof and have it, uh, have it peak in the middle with a taller tower segment. Now, one thing I didn't realize, but uh, that little lake there, that little pond next to where I'm building the barn is actually a pond full of mana. And when I dug those trees, all the logs fell in it and became wisdom wood. And I liked the logs so much, I thought, you know what, let's just use it. So what I could do was chop down the fir wood trees. And I think with every tree, you get like three or four stacks of logs. It's so good. And I just tossed the logs into the pond and got loads of wisdom wood. And those are the logs we're going to use to build the framework of our building. So the first, uh, the first iteration of this barn was much smaller. But as I put down the, uh, as I put down the floor out of wood planks, I realized it was much too small. So I kept coming back and making it a little bit bigger until I got to this size right now, which is where I felt uh, I, liked, I liked in terms of size. So we want the entrance to be in the middle. And it's going to be a barn that you can go all the way through because we're going to want access to the woods behind the barn itself. And there's not really much space either side of the barn for a path. So we're going to have a, a walkway through the middle. Now I'm using fir wood planks. Nature's given us these trees on our doorstep and I like the look. So we're going to use that. It's a nice light gray, kind of almost like a light chocolatey kind of color. So there's going to be room for about four animal pens in here. And I made those pens about five blocks by five blocks. And then I continue to build up with wooden logs with the framework. It took me a long time, but I got there eventually. And then we'll skip forwards to me putting the roof on and the finished barn. So this is complete with windows, extra framework. We haven't decorated it yet, but that will come soon. Right, so there you go. We've completed construction of the cow barn. My two brown cows are still in their temporary pen and there's loads of cows around. Now, what we need to do is also get sheep, pigs and ducks, but this is going to be the cow barn. Now, let me walk you through some of the decisions I made with this build. Now, there's a couple of things out of place. It's not quite complete. It's mostly done. The framework's there and the decoration of the outside's done, but I can't do the interior because I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do the interior. So I've left zones here. One, two, three, four, five by five blocks, because that's usually the maximum amount of area a kind of harvester or machine tool can use to interact with wildlife and animals. So I've got four cages, four different zones around here that could feasibly fit cows and then do something with them so that it could uh, make them breed and then it could kill them to take their leather or it could kill them to take uh, their their meat. So this is basically going to be a kind of a slaughterhouse, I suppose, but for cows. So that's it. I mean, it's a big barn and thinking about it, there might be a way where we could just use cows in one corner, chickens in another corner, sheep in one corner and pigs in another corner. Uh, with the chickens, we need a way to get the eggs and the feathers. With the sheep, you need a way to shear them and to kill them for their meat too. And pigs, pigs are just all meat. They're all sausage, all bacon. So we can just have them be killed. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, actually. There's another thing you can do with cows, and that's milk them. And we do want milk at some point. But definitely it feels like uh, we could have another barn be the milking shed. We went through a really convoluted process in the first Feed the World series I did. 
We milked cows using some machines that kind of right-clicked on the cow with a bucket, filled it with milk, and it was a really complicated setup. It did work in the end, but it was a nightmare to get, get done. It was the hardest thing I had to build in that series, but it was pretty cool when it was done. However, I think this barn is going to be the slaughterhouse. It's just going to kill the animals that we have in there, breed them, kill them, take their stuff and put them in a warehouse. Now, we don't have a warehouse yet, and that could feasibly, that could possibly be a build for another day. But in the time it's taken us to build our barn, all of our crops are fully grown. We do have a nice little garden here, and we can use this to kind of choose, pick and choose what kind of crops and plots we want to plant. And as I said, these temporary pens are literally temporary, so they're going to go the journey. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be a thing of the past pretty soon. Oh man, th this place really feels like it's shaping up to be an actual farm. I need a few more buildings, but also another thing I really want to do is you see, um, you see this area here. I want a nice path. I want to. I know you can use like a shovel to right click to put down path, and that might be a cool thing to do. But I want to bring up the area. I want to use the waterfall. I want it to come down. I want to shape it a bit because at the moment it spreads out all messy across the mountain. It looks a bit dumb, and all of this is from one source of water. But I want to shape the water down the mountain, carve out a man-made river down the middle here, or maybe even just pull it into a pond. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. And build some bridges, some paths, some fences, some, some lamps as well. I want some street lights and some lighting. And that's going to be like a pretty cool thing to do. The annoying thing about not being able to do anything with the animals is because I haven't got the technology yet. I haven't got the, the minerals. I haven't got any diamonds. I haven't got any steel at all. I don't yet have the machines I need to do what I want to do with the animals. I can't yet slaughter them. And I don't have any pipes or anything like that either to suck those items around. I'm getting very close in the city to a point with immersive engineering where I can do that. But that's going to have to be a, a wait and see kind of thing. And we'll have to wait for the city to catch up with the farm. But there are certainly other things I can work on. I can definitely get the crops in place as well. And just like the uh, just like the barn, all I need to do is make sure I have the right size plots for the machines I want to use before we put them into motion and get the ball rolling. Now there are some forestry things. Let me take a look at those. Forestry. So forestry is mostly bees, bees, trees, butterflies, wow. and cans cans of all the liquids in the game. Well, there's 22 pages of forestry stuff. Look at all these trees as well. Now, actually, what we could do also, it's like a little kind of side project, but we could breed trees to hunt for the elusive mahogany. It must be here. Where are you, mahogany? There it is, mahogany wood. Oh, ho, 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 the finest. We're going to hunt the mahogany tree as well as a side project. Man, look at these doors as well. Oh, that's why you want these kind of these these extra woods, because the textures on some of these uh, these planks and stairs and doors are freaking amazing. But yeah, forestry has all these things like the peat fired engines, the biogas engines, clockwork engines. We've used all these before. It's got greenhouses. Oh, man, this this mod has changed a lot since I've investigated it before. But if I want to build a greenhouse, all I need is iron, camouflage paneling. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Dark oak. And this is in a carpenter. Hmm. Ah, oh, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do that. For the crops, we're definitely going to take a second look at forestry. It's, it's got a whole... It's got these multi-block structures, which we've used before. But so much, so many other things have changed massively with this mod. So I'm really excited to kind of investigate that. Also, guess what, guys? We're going to be hitting bees. That's right. I'm not lying with that one. We're going to go straight to the flying magic insects. Now, we're not going to go straight to them, but minor queen? Silky minor? Assassin queen? What is this? Bee wars? Sounds pretty crazy. Robot princess? Oh, oh you know, creeper. NCA princess? You know what? How can we not do bees with some of these cool bee queen bees on, on patrol? Oh. Got devil bees, cook bees. Lumber bees, engineer bees, plague princess, or crusher princess. Man, I tell you what, we've definitely got to look at these bees. That's going to be a really cool thing to check out. But right now, supplying the city is the biggest thing. And the biggest thing the city needs is food, leather, and wool. From wool, we can get string, which is what we get from sheep. We can also farm cotton. It's another way of getting wool. So we'll see about that. But anyway, join me next time when we investigate forestry. I think we're going to use 
the workshop down here to put down the carpenter and things. We can definitely get like a makeshift generator for the time being, just like a coal-fired one, to work all of the machines that we need. And then we can uh, then we can definitely start putting down some crop fields. And I want big, big crop fields. I don't want small ones. I want huge crop fields. I want enough crops to to feed feed the world. Well, maybe not the world. We're, we're past that. To feed the city. Well, I've been Stjin, and this has been Feed the City. Join us next time when, like I said, we're going to be investigating carpentry and doing some crops. Till next time, guys. Take care.